Hello and welcome to our A to J Author Basics Training. My name is Jessica Bolak Frank, and I am the program coordinator here at the Center for Access to Justice and Technology at Chicago Kent. On our agenda today, we have creating a new question in A to J Author, a discussion of the Question tab, Fields tab, Buttons tab, and the Advanced tab, and then a look at additional resources. First, let's talk about how to create a new question in A to J Author. A new guided interview comes pre-populated with four questions. You can add a question to the default list by clicking the plus sign located at the bottom of your question list. When you click the plus button, it duplicates the last question you had selected. Questions appear in the guided interview by how they are connected to each other. So you can see how they're connected via the flow chart with the arrow snaking between the questions. And another important thing to remember on this screen is that you only choose an exit question if you want to enable save and resume. If you don't want the end user to be able to save their answers and leave the interview and come back later, leave the exit question blank like it is here. When you double click on a question in the question list or in the flow chart, the question design window opens up. There are four main tabs in this design window. The question tab, the fields tab, the buttons tab, and the advanced tab. In the question tab, you'll do the main part of your authoring. Here's where, where you will create your question text and your learn more text. You will add pop-ups and bold and text hyperlinks. You can also add audio, video, and graphics. You can add in design notes. You can designate this question as part of a repeat loop. You can preview the question as the end user would see it. You can view the XML code and you can always leave the question design window and go to the full screen preview. By taking a closer look at the questions tab, we can see that the author can change the step this question is in and the question name itself. A to J Author organizes your questions in the question list by step number and then alphanumerically. So a tip to keep your question list organized and a tip is to start every question name with a number to keep your questions organized. The four preset questions that come with every A to J guide interview are ordered this way. And remember, Questions appear to the end user in the way you connect them, not necessarily in the order in which they are listed in your question list. You can customize your question text by creating bold text, italicizing the font, hyperlinking to websites, adding pop-ups, adding audio clips in the form of MP3s to the question text and the learn more answer section, you can add in learn more sections. This gives your end user just-in-time learning and is presented in an ask and answer format. The end user's avatar thinks a question and the guide avatar answers that question. And in the learn more section, you can add graphics in the form of JPEGs, .ping, or .gif, and you can add videos uh, in the form of flash videos to the learn more answer section. The next tab in the question design window is the fields tab. The fields tab lets you set the field type, change the field label, designate a variable for that field. You can require or allow the end user to leave a question blank. You can create and change the standard prompt for required questions. And you can add and delete fields. You'll also be able to see the list of all of your fields here. You don't have to either use this fields tab for every question. You could just use the buttons tab. Buttons only allow for three options and don't allow the end user to fill in information. Fields, on the other hand, allow for more end user answer possibilities. A to J Author comes pre-programmed with 18 common field types. Don't reinvent the wheel. Use those templates for your answers. All of the templates are editable. So for example, the one shown here is the full address. If your form doesn't require county or doesn't require a zip code, feel free to remove those fields from the template. 
and an important tip is to be sure to rename your variables with your own naming convention. The A to J author software creates a new variable for these fields, but it may not be on the same naming convention that you are using. So what are field types? Fields are the format of the answer that the end user provides. There are six basic types. Text, number, date, gender fields, radio buttons, and checkboxes. Field types are not the same as variable types. Variable types determine how the data should be treated. The field type is again just the format of the answer that an end user provides. So for example, the field type phone number is actually variable type text. It's text because you aren't going to be doing any calculations with a phone number. Whereas it's a number variable type when you could potentially be doing calculations. Digging into the fields tab a little bit deeper, you can see that the label is what appears before the field in the question text. A field does not need a label, but sometimes it can be helpful with multiple fields to label what you are asking the end user for. You can assign default values for variables. So for example, you can auto fill in the state or county of the form that you are using. You can limit value ranges for numbers. For example, you can limit the date of birth range from a maximum of 1912 to a minimum year of 2012. Or you can limit it to today. Using the phrase today, the A to J author will know and will adjust for the specific date that the end user is filling in the form. You can show a calendar for dates. You can include a calculator for numbers. You can order a list in ascending or descending order. And you can require the user to fill in the answer or you may allow them to leave it blank. Moving on to the buttons tab, this screen gives you an overview of the features in this section. We have the button label, the ability to assign a variable of value. We have the option of including this in a repeat loop. We can set a destination question on a button click. We have the ability to add and delete buttons and we have the list of current buttons available. By default, there is only one button in an A to J author question. That is the continue button. You can add up to two more buttons for a total of three buttons maximum per question. If you need to give your end user more than three options, you're gonna to wanna to use the fields tab instead of the buttons tab. And you can label your buttons however you like. You don't have to use yes, no, continue, next. You can use any phrase you'd like. So at the bottom question here, I have, do you have children? Yes, no, or we're pregnant. And each one of those answers would take us to a different spot in the questions. So what can a button do? A button can assign a value to a variable. It can take an end user to another question. So for example, next, previous, jump ahead, or sequentially move through your questions. It can also set or increment a counting variable, which is something you're gonna need in repeat loops. To connect one question to another, you will use the buttons to select a destination question. When you click on the little yellow folder next to the destination question, a drop-down list will appear. You can select from other questions you've made, back to prior question, success process form, several different exiting options, and the option to exit to a specific website. This is how you create the connections that you will see in the question flowchart. The final tab in the question design window is the advanced tab. There are four main sections in the advanced tab. We have the summary of conditions, the data evaluations that are going to occur in this interview, the event, that is when to run the evaluation. You either can run it before the question or after the end user presses the button. We have the condition, that is what data to evaluate and how to evaluate it. And we have the action, that is what to do if the condition is met, as in it is true, or what to do if the, question, if the condition is not met, in that it is false. You can either go to a question or you can assign a variable of value. From the advanced tab, you can branch or set a value of variables based on simple logic conditions. You add conditions with the plus button, then you set the event, the condition, and the action properties to be displayed. 
the condition is what the trigger situation is. The event is when to test for the condition. The condition is the expression to be evaluated as true or false. For example, in that last screen, I showed you advanced condition that was evaluating whether income was above a specific amount. And the action is what happens after that condition is evaluated. We will go more in depth into the advanced tab in a future training, but don't let the advanced tab scare you off. It's actually not that difficult. On the next few slides, we're going to talk about some tips for writing questions within A to J Author. Several of these tips were provided by our expert A to J guided interview developers within the legal aid community. So it is important to have a short and meaningful title of your question. The end user will be able to see the title, so keep that in mind. Also keep in mind your audience and the goal you have. Include instructions on how to complete the form. If there are things that they are going to need to do after they print the form, make sure to tell them that. Group like questions together. If you have questions that ask about children, ask all the children questions together. If you have questions about income, ask all the income questions together. By giving context to each set of questions, you can transition smoothly from one topic to the next. So tell your end user that in this next set of questions, you're going to be asking about their income or you're going to be asking about their expenses. And then you can smoothly transition from one topic to the next. Begin with easy, safe questions. Remember that our goal is a fifth grade reading level. Use emboldened font, but use it sparingly. So think about one word or one item that you want to emphasize per question. Balance interesting question formats with consistency. So you don't want to ask all of your questions in the same long box answer. Mix that up, but don't go crazy with the field types. Use images in the Learn More section. So for example, if your end user has to sign something at the end, show them and circle it in red uh, where on the form they're going to need to sign. Or if there's a specific place they need to look for information that you're asking about, have a picture showing them where to find that information. And always make it convenient for your end user. The order of the questions is also important to think about and to plan out. You don't have to follow the order of the form itself. You can gather information from your end user in any order. So at the beginning of the interview, give them a checklist of things that they're going to need. If you're going to ask about their tax information, tell them up front that they should have their W-2s available. Give them instructions on how to use the interview. Let them know that when they complete the interview, they'll be taken to another website where they can print their documents and get those qualification and eligibility questions out of the way. You don't want to have someone go through an hour-long guided interview to find out on the last screen that they can't even use the form that they've spent all this time creating. When you get to sp sensitive questions, follow these techniques. Start off with the neutral questions and get harder. Don't ask about sensitive issues right up front. Build up to that and create a hierarchy of answers and always embed your questions in a safe context without judgment. For individual questions, it is important to remember to evoke the truth. Ask for an answer on only one dimension. Accommodate all possible answers. Allow for an I don't know or an other. Leave no ambiguity about what you're asking about. Be careful about assuming what the user knows. That goes back to allowing for an I don't know or an other. Questions shouldn't rely on previous questions, but if you have a question like, do you have any other assets that you want to add? In the Learn More section, provide the end user with a list of the assets that they have already told you about. This can be done with a variable macro, and we'll, we will discuss this in a future lesson. Be careful not to use leading language, and avoid asking questions where the user has to rank items by importance. Remember our lesson on plain language and readability. Write for your audience. Consider the end user's age, education, culture, and language when you're creating the questions. Use familiar words and phrasing. If you have to use specialized terms, explain them. That's what pop-ups are for. Avoid foreign, archaic, or noun-heavy phrasing. Use the active voice and a direct address. Eliminate surplus words and omit unnecessary details. Boil it down for your end user. The all-important fifth grade reading level is here. 
And if you feel like you need to practice that plain language and readability again, you can go to writeclearly.org's plain language online course. Also watch your modifying adjectives and adverbs. They can mean different things to different people. For example, words with high variability among people are words like most, a substantial majority, several. But those same ideas can be conveyed with words of low variability, like almost all, lots, a few, a couple. To learn more about question design, you can always go to our a to j author.org website and find our a to j authoring guide with screenshots that will walk you through everything we've discussed today. You can also go and see our recorded trainings and presentations on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or call me here. Thank you.